Six Degree of Freedom platforms, also called Stewart platforms or hexapods, create unlimited motion inside the space the six actuators can travel. The upper platform can pitch, yaw, roll, and translate in the X, Y, and Z planes in the space defined by the stroke length of the actuators. This freedom means the system is great for simulating or recreating real-world movements in a repeatable or controlled way. Stewart platforms have found uses in a range of applications in industries such as entertainment, testing, aerospace, automotive, marine, and rail. Delta's RMC motion controllers are particularly well suited to six DOF systems. The controller precisely controls and coordinates six hydraulic actuators, producing smooth, precise motion with heavy loads. This example is a very large platform built for the movie and television industry. We see the six DOF system being exercised with large concrete blocks on a 40 foot by 40 foot stage platform. After the engineers were satisfied with safety and performance of the system, they stood in for actors on the stage while a technician carefully moved an input device or Waldo to control the platform. Motion profiles created with the Waldo were recorded in the RMC motion controller. When the movie director and crew were satisfied, the same profiles were used repeatedly, take after take, until they got the footage they wanted. This system was later used in the production of the feature movie 2012. Delta distributor Servo Controls of India demonstrated this 6 DOF they built at an international trade show. Six electromechanical actuators fitted with external SSI position sensors perform closed loop synchronized motion controlled by an RMC 150 controller, synchronizing the motion to a recording of the song with it. Servo Controls use this as a sales demonstration for several years before eventually modifying it for a customer that uses it for fuel tank condition simulation and testing. You can see they're using RMCs with the electric actuators and these were our first customers for using Six Degree of Freedom. They used it to retrofit Moog flight simulators. This is the MathCAD file that I used to do the testing for the Six Degree of Freedom. Delta president and control subject matter expert Peter Noctway explains the challenges of programming a six DOF platform using MathCAD to perform the calculations. There are many ways that you can do the calculations and the way we do it is the same way that they do it for aircraft because originally we were used with the uh, aircraft simulator. An important step in setting up the controls is choosing a coordinate system and then consistently applying that system to define the direction of motion and rotation. Then the engineer has to decide if the controls will calculate the system's forward kinematics, determining the platform position starting from the cylinder positions, or the inverse kinematics, where the commanded platform position determines the required cylinder positions. Uh, we define yaw, uh, pitch, and roll as always being positive. So you can see that we have to do an awful lot of uh, definitions, calculations, a lot of testing, many different arrays. And there's different ways that you can define these arrays depending upon the order and uh, you know which way is uh, whether you're using left-hand rule or right-hand rule. In 2014, Delta developed a 6DOF visualization program. A Delta engineer demonstrates the 6DOF visualization software he developed. Six degree of freedom profile editor, and this is the profile motion script, just as we've had in the past. You can connect to the RMC 150 by pressing connect once the address is in here and then press motion profile and it will run this profile and send it to the controller as you can see on the plots and here the six degree of freedom renderer shows the actual physical movement in simulation three dimensions this software together with a motion profile editor is available for customers to use I can pick up the Xbox 360 controller and start moving it directly. Now you'll notice we can 
tilt it along one axis and tilt it in and out along another axis. Using this other stick up here, we can move it, translate it along an axis. Mm -hmm. And then we can combine all of them, of course, and move it in three dimensions simultaneously. When I release the controls, it returns to the home position. The new Delta 60OF testing lab includes a miniature 60OF hydraulic platform with a maze and a Waldo control device. This system is similar to the motion stage featured at the beginning of the video. The Waldo uses SSI position sensors measuring each displacement. These displacements are then mirrored to the platform through an RMC 200 controller. Delta engineers also built a maze for the 60OF. By using the Waldo, users can move a ball through the maze. Delta president and control system expert Peter Noctway now presents an in-depth explanation of the mathematics for controlling our 6DOF platform. Hello, this is my six degree of freedom uh, motion platform. It's being controlled by an RMC 200 here and it's also got an output which is turning that little motor around on top. And uh, you can see we've got six hydraulic cylinders. They're uh, very small with analog feedback. And then we have six star uh, servo valves. In the background here behind the dividers, there's a small hydraulic pump. It's on the other side of the dividers to reduce the noise. And uh, basically the RMC is controlling uh, the six axes. And let me just show you Okay, right here are the six uh, physical axes that you can see. And also there's uh, six virtual axes. And these virtual axes are not normally part of a six degree of freedom program. Uh, normally these six axes, these uh, X, Y, Z, yaw, pitch and roll, is generated by an external simulator program like a submarine simulator, aircraft simulator, or car simulator. And then what happens is that that information has to be downloaded to the RMC. And uh, then the RMC has a task, uh, task zero, which uh, takes the uh, X, yaw, pitch, and roll, X, Y, and Z, and converts it to cylinder extensions here. So if I show the uh, task monitor, you can see that this is task zero. It's running the, uh, this is the program that takes the X, Y, Z, yaw, pitch, and roll, and converts it to cylinder extensions. And then there's a show program here. And let me just show you that. Okay, we go to the show program, and let's move this over. So, the show program does an initial startup, and it turns on the output to move the little radar disk around. And then it starts the uh, cubic interpolation task, which is task zero. It does a delay for a second, lets everything get into position. And then it runs the uh, square program, which is here. And then when that's done, it runs the uh, circle flat here. Then uh, it's running the uh, circle tilt here. And this is the circle tilt out here. And then when it gets done, it loops back around up to this uh, step, step two here. You can see that it's a jump and it repeats that, uh, these programs over again. And then the individual programs are right here. And you can see this is moving the X, Y, Z. And it, because it's flat, it's not trying to do 
um, the yaw, pitch, and roll. It's just moving the, the three uh, x, y, and z axes. Now it's doing the circle flat. Let's see, that one's here. And again, that's basically the same. See, the circle flat is doing this. And then we have uh, the tilt. And you can see what step it's on by looking at these little arrows. And you can see the program executing over here. And what's significant about the, uh, uh, the motion profiles or the, the graphs over here is that all the motion is very, very smooth. You can move this over a little bit. It's very smooth. And you can see it's changing programs here. Then uh, also the following errors are very small. Do a stop that and then start here. And this is, uh, this shows the error between the target and actual position for axis 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And they all have their separate scale so that uh, they could be separated out. You can see that's number 3. Number four, you see that's got zero down there, and see the scale changes depending upon what axis I'm on. So this is axis zero, and you can see that the following error is down in the range of uh, just a couple thousandths, and it usually happens uh, at the end of a stroke. There's a little bit of stac static friction when it changes direction, but for the most part, the error is very small. That means tuning is almost perfect. There are no forces being applied to that platform that would try to bend it. So you can see that uh, uh, the quality of the motion, the quality of the calculations is very, very good.